So, welcome back and today it's all about displacement textures, different displacement texture types and how we can use them in cycles. For example here that's a 16-bit displacement map, maybe that it looks familiar to you, a grey background and a little bit of white and black. Okay, but there are more, for example 32-bit displacement maps, 16-bit and procedural textures, for example the noise texture, this one here you can specify the scale and so on, right, the pattern, then it spits out values between 0 and 1. So if you want different values, you have to change them afterwards. But there's also, for example, the checker texture or brick texture, where you can specify, it's also a procedural texture, but you can specify the input, the color in this case, for example, 1 and 0, but you could also choose 3, right? or a negative value, you can't, I think you can't tape in negative values directly, no, but you could do something like that here, right? Okay, anyway, these are two different types. So in total, three types, image textures, procedural and procedural with an input. Okay, let's get rid of the, and start with the baked displacement map. And these displacement maps are baked in ZBrush here is ZBrush and I'm going to show you a few yeah, settings, what I use. Okay, but first of all we analyze this map here and it has a, back, uh, a gray background, value of 0.5, right? And then there are different values like lighter values, nearly 1, 0.9 or so, and darker values like this here. Uh, nearly zero. So what does that mean? Everything above 0.5 goes outwards and everything below 0.5 will go inwards. Okay, but as you can see this is everything is between zero and one so yeah nothing <laughs> will go inwards. So we have to change something for the 16-bit displacement map. That's why you shouldn't use 16-bit displacement map. They are too complicated. I mean, it works somehow, but it's too complicated compared to a um, 32 displacement map. Let me show you one to you. As you can see, this one is black. This here, the background is basically black, right? And then there are negative values. You can see negative values here. You can see the values and positive values. So yeah, that's way easier. So stick to 32 displacement map, not to 16-bit. But I'm going to show you how to use a 16-bit displacement map. <coughs> So maybe if you're familiar with the displace modifier and the direction normal, that's what cycle supports at the moment. There's no vector displacement, just normal scalar or float displacement, however you want to call this one. But cycles can everything what the displace modifier can do with the normal direction. Right? Here's the mid-level and here's the strength. I guess strength is clear, but the mid-level what what's the mid level right what's the mid level let's check that okay let's get rid of this one here so we need this map back here 16 bit okay we got 0.5 bigger values and lower values and what you need to do to emulate this mid level we need a subtract node subtract and yeah, there's no displacement node at the moment there will be one in a in the next release, later release, but there will be one for sure. But it's, it's good to know what the mid-level actually does. Okay, and then we stick it in here. And let's take a look at it. And now you can see everything that's 0.5 is black, is zero basically. Or if it's like 0.1, then it's minus 0.4 and so on, so we get negative values, right? Negative and positive values, because if you sub subtract, okay, this here is 0 0.73, if you subtract 0 0.5, then it's 0 0.23, right? It's still positive, so it would go outwards, but if you subtract 0 0.5 here, it's nearly zero, it would be minus 0 0.5, so it's minus, it's negative. That's, that's all you need for the mid-level subtract more not, not more <laughs> that's everything you need then you should know for blender 2.78 there is you need a scale factor what does that mean you need a 
math node and change it to multiply and the scale factor is 10. That's hard coded and cycled at the moment and in the later re um, release that will be removed but at the moment it's there so you have to scale everything by 10 basically. Not everything but to do it properly you have to scale it by 10. So then we get the correct results. Okay. And now we stick this into our displacement slot and this slot here is gray which means it's only one value, a float value, right? Like this here. Value only one value is gray. And combine x blah blah. This is blue, so that means three values. Okay, that's a different or yellow also means three values. We plug it in and here you can see the displacement already, but that is way too big. So 16-bit displacement maps, um, they need a, sc a scale factor. Maybe the program, program where you baked it will tell you that number. I know that number roughly, it's 0.1. In this case, <laughs> I don't need to multiply it by 10, but I use a different node. Uh, so, and the this, this strength, basically, let's call this one here strength. Strength. And this here is the mid-level, mid-level, so and that's the scale fix, scale fix 2.78, okay, and then you get the correct displacement, right, that's the correct displacement. That's a everything you need, basically that's the displacement node, you could group that and call this displacement, this here is mid-level, this is strength, and this is for Blender 2.78. Okay, and here's an image. If you experience something like this here, inflating or ballooning effect, then your mid-level is too low. Let's change it to 0.2 and, oh, let's actually change it to 0. <laughs> As you can see, there's a, yeah, a little bit of ballooning going on. You know, it looks bloated. And if, it's, if you experience something like this here, shrinking, then your mid-level is too big and the correct mid-level would be 0.5 and in most of the cases I guess 99% of all cases it's 0.5 okay but take a look uh, let's take a look at the ZBrush I mean you could specify the mid-level here but it doesn't make sense so let's leave it at 0.5 so and here a few settings for ZBrush flip B you need this one smooth UV you don't need this one and you shouldn't use it because the Zebra Smooth UV algorithm isn't compatible with blenders, right? And Cycles Adaptive Subdivision doesn't support it at the moment. It will be later supported, but not at the moment. But anyway, the, the Subdivide UV algorithm is different than Zebra's. Okay, Adaptive, you could check that one, but this mesh is too low for Adaptive, so no, not for this mesh. Threes channel, you shouldn't use three channels anymore. Just, just leave it unchecked. So it will bake a one channel map and it will save you a ton of memory. And then you specify your mid value and then you bake it. Okay. And for a 32 bit map, you have to change the mid level to zero and check 32. The rest is the same. And then you bake it. Okay. That's how you use a 16 bit displacement map, right? mid-level, the scale fix, and the strength. You, of course, you could combine the scale fix and the strength, but yeah, you, sh you should notice here that you have to scale it by 10 to get the proper result. Okay, let's get rid of this one. And now a 32-bit map. First of all, it looks like that again. And the zero, and yeah, a little bigger than zero or larger and smaller than zero negative values. That will bake directly all the real numbers that the mesh needs into, into the map, right? So you don't need this mid-level thing and you don't need the strength. The strength is always one, right? Except in Blender 2.7, you need the scale factor again. Multiply the scale, uh, this, this map with the scale factor, in this case 10. You could also bake it with a scale of 10, right? but then it's not compatible with other programs or so, or maybe it's confusing. Anyway, 
you have to scale this by 10 and then you stick it in and that's it. Of course you should change it to none color here or linear. And let's render that. And boom, there it is. Way easier than to figure out the, the strength value. It's different for every mesh. This here is always the same. Multiplied by 10 in 2.78, stick it in, that's it. Nothing more. No strength, no mid-level, nothing. Yeah. Then if you scale the mesh up, let's say we scale it by 4 and render it again. That is still correct, but if you apply the scale, like here you can see the scale factor, if you apply it and it's, it's back to 1, then you have to scale the map as well, also this one here, by in this case 4. So let's render it first. Now you can see there's a little bit of the spacement missing, it looks a little too smooth, but we know the scale factor by 4, and there it is, back to the original displacement. Okay, let's undo that. Yeah, that's everything you should know, mid-level, strength, and the scale factor, it's true for everything. My recommendation 32 bit maps, not 16 bit maps. Okay, next one is this here. It's my own checker texture. It has a, a smoothing function. You, you need some, some, some smoothing function. You can't use the original checker texture. This is not so good for displacement. So anyway, let's call this here a checker texture, UV mapping, blah, blah. And you can see here, this is the mid-level again, the scale fix and the strengths. And let's render this. Well, let's go in a different position. Okay, as you can see here, the, the cursor is exactly at the plane in the middle. And let's render it. And you can see, oh, that was a little close. A little bit goes up and a little bit goes down, right? That's due to the mid-level here, but if I set this to but zero, no mid-level, everything goes up, outwards, bloating effect. Sometimes you want it, sometimes you don't. And if you change the mid-level to one, then everything goes down, inwards, shrinking effect. But for a checker texture, you might want this. So, okay, leave this here, and then you can also scale this if you like, but I need a smooth function. Let's put in a regular checker texture here, this one, this UVs, and let's do zero and one. Okay, in this case, it looks actually okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not bad, but it can cause artifacts and whatnot. Yeah, it's better to use something with a smooth, yeah function. Okay, next example is the is a cube actually with um, subdivision surface on it. This here is just for the preview to show you that it will be a sphere at render time and object coordinates, noise texture and yeah this, this node here spits out values between 0 and 1. And let's stick it in here without the scaling factor and let's check that. It looks like that here. Not bad actually, but it's it's wrong. You need a scaling factor of 10 to get the proper result. And that's the proper result. Okay. And as you can see, everything goes outwards again. So here's the end. And if we render that, everything goes outwards. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't. Just at the mid-level, right? Just subtract 0.5 in this case. Makes sense because it gives you values between 0 and 1. But you could change that if you like. So, now you see a little bit goes inwards and a little bit goes outwards. Yeah. But if you change it to 1, everything goes inwards, shrinking effect. If you change it again to 0, everything goes outwards and but yeah, for procedural, you could use whatever you want. There is no rule. For a map, there is most of the time a rule 0.5.
yeah these are all the different textures and as you can see this here this this is very easy just the subtract node you could also go bigger right um, no let's go rid of this one here and subtract two or more let's go crazy here 16 oh now it goes outwards uh, yeah with procedural textures you could make whatever you want right okay but it looks stupid <laughs> point 0.5 we want 0.5 scale factor and then you can yeah you could do this in the same node yes but you should you should definitely notice here this 10 factor okay i think that's it see you in the next tutorial